It's almost like you have to like. You're like trying to like, it's like on guard, like Jesus. But look at I, I'm getting it. You are getting it. When you got here, what did you say to me? I said, "Do you have your knife on you?" Um. Where was it? It was in my car. Yeah, but that's not how that works. But I keep it in my pocket. <laughs> You're trying to get us demonetized already? How are you going to get to that in like you know, any easy, like quick way? Watch, I'll do it. I can get it back in. Okay, so I'm walking. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Can you just Actually. flick it like with your thumb? You're asking a lot of me. <laughs> like this. That's a big negative. <laughs> so I've had these stickers for a very long time. Not sack stickers. All these, like this is a wee banter and some wear knives stickers. Weird. These were sent to me by a guy on Instagram, Beer and Bug Out. They sent me these like palm tree. Gun. Those are actually really cool. Yeah, those are cool. Then of course I got. Wait, is it not in there? Flop. Where'd it go? <laughs> uh, there's supposed to be like a Peach Pirate Life sticker pack in there. Too much for that. <laughs> the whole idea was for people to send me stickers so I can fill up my uh, tool chest with cool stickers. So I found them. Uh, Pete, well, the guys over at Big Idea Design sent me these because Peter wanted me to have some sticker packs. And uh, I got some sticker packs. I'm actually going to give two of these away so random commenter you comment down below i'll pick two random winners and i'll send you out a sticker pack one of these is going to go or two of them may go on instagram but one of these sticker packs is going to go right here That's a lot of stickers pete there's so many stickers i think kirk did most of the art if not all of the artwork because he's a beast See, I've been uh, putting stickers on here for like a year now. It's a whole lot of stickers, but I need more. So this is really just office number two. It's the editing suite. It's not ever really gonna look super nice. We're gonna paint the walls a little bit. I didn't show you guys before because it wasn't ready. Still not ready, but this is where I do my editing, uh, most of my work. I'm gonna have another desk in here for Megan uh, so she can edit. 3D printer will stay in here. That table is not gonna stay in here most likely. This room's not really done, but there's not anything really fancy gonna be done to this space. The other room, however, is the nice one. I'm not quite ready for like a full office tour or anything yet. And there's not a whole lot to show, but this is the lounge. This is the one I'm proud of, at least. It's about halfway done. We've gotta get an overhead rig that we're gonna custom build. And then this wall right here is gonna be the backdrop of a video set. So the way I made this room, you can shoot in either direction so that way is a really nice looking like loungy set and this is more of like a you know professional background except for the whole background is going to be whiskey <laughs> <laughs> so uh, professional ish so yeah that's kind of like a, a quick partial update on the office it's obviously not done we've got some more work to do in here this space like i don't want to ever leave this space it's turned out so cool like i come here at night sometimes just to hang out in here by myself Cause because I don't have friends, but. <laughs> you have me. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't have friends. Oh, oh. okay, well. <laughs> no, I've had several friends over here just, you know, come in here and hang out. It's just a chill spot and that's what I wanted. Uh, the downside is that I never want to work in here. Like it's it's too comfortable sometimes. Have you seen this? What is it? Oh. <laughs> have you seen? So I don't know how long ago it was. Uh, somebody sent me this. So they handmade this postcard and this postcard has like really nice penmanship and everything oh in it. Oh my gosh. I'm all about like... Do you, do you see what it is though? Yeah, it's it, it has like... Can do without pen after using so many letters. This guy critiqued my video in a handwritten notebook, handmade notebook. Like... That is... With timestamps, multiple bullet points per timestamp. That is... Several pages. He almost filled up this little notebook. That is crazy. Check Look at how he signs out, like, or signs off at the very end. Hee haw. Hee haw. Bill. Hee haw, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. So I have uh, designated 
a little shelf space. This has actually always been in my set since he sent it to me. I, I keep critiques on my shelf. Don't send me your critiques. I'm not going to keep any more, but that one was kind of funny because it was the first one. Uh, if you want to critique me, just do it in the comments and I'll ignore it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> feels cozy. feels right. For the first time, I, I feel like I have a place that works the way I want it to. Because you're not in a dungeon either. Also that, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's windows and light here. It's really nice. I know it doesn't say anything on the cup, but this is groundwork. If you were in like the Charlotte area, go to Groundwork Common. They have the best coffee around. So yesterday I asked you guys for questions over on Instagram, I told you I would do a Q&A. I haven't done one in a while. So here's a good question from Serial Hobbyist. He said, I tested positive for Corona. As a family man, how did you quarantine from your family? Well, well, I didn't. We all tested positive at the same time. So I didn't. Here's one from Sir Wolfenite. What are you most excited to do once the workshop is ready to go? Um, rebuild my trailer. It's something I've wanted to do since I bought the trailer like four years ago and I just haven't. So tearing that thing down to its core trailer and building it up how I want is probably the thing I'm looking forward to the most. But also just like tiny projects, smaller things that I, I'm not, you know, capable of doing in here and I can do out there. I've, I've not had that ability to really work outside like that. So I'm very excited about that. Jeep Skater 04, how do you balance the workload of channels and the family time? Man, I've, I've learned that it's not nearly as easy. Like before I struggled with work-life balance, now I have no choice, right? Five or six o'clock, I head out, I go home, spend a few hours with the family and they go to bed and I go back to work. So uh, I'd say that's like four nights out of every single week, I go back to work after everybody goes to bed. Um, so it's not really a balance, but more of just like, just learning to cope <laughs> and learning, not learning, I, I just don't need a lot of sleep. So that's also very helpful. I, I go to bed at like one or 2 a.m. and still up at eight. So I, I get five, six hours of sleep a night usually. So uh, that's how I deal with it, is not needing a whole lot of sleep. That's probably not the answer you wanted, but that's the one you get. <laughs> what will you consider doing once you feel you have reached a plateau in what you do? I know not a lot of people feel like I've hit a plateau, but I personally do feel like I hit a plateau because I haven't tried like every piece of gear. I don't have any like super expensive custom knives. I don't have any like really expensive watches and customs or not customs, but like luxury watches. I don't really have a ton of luxury watches or anything in that category, but I've tried most things out there. I just kind of blew through it in two years and, uh, you know, now everything just kind of feels like a different take on the same thing or, you know, a marginal improvement. And that's not specific to EDC. I mean, I got the same way when I was in tech, I got kind of bored with it and I felt like I just hit the ceiling and that's where I feel like I am now. And I don't have a desire to just review every knife that ever comes out. That seems mind numbingly boring to me. And I know some of you want that you want knife reviews and there's some great channels that you can subscribe to for knife reviews that's never been my goal but for me to sit here and keep showing you brand after brand after brand after brand it gets old and it's not something i'm interested in doing forever so i want to innovate and that's kind of the struggle for every youtuber how do you innovate how do you build on what you're already doing without you know straying too far from your core content so for me i think the best thing that i can do is start making my own gear, start working on learning how to do different things within the EDC realm, uh, modifying gear. So that's one thing I'm gonna do when I have the shop up and running is have like an anodizing station and a, like a bead blaster and a tumbler and, and do my own customizations and show you how to do that yourself. Staying within EDC and adding more elements to it is, is the plan this year, honestly. It's not even like a far off goal of something I wanna do very, very soon. EDC22 says, knives or watches and how are you going to make a guy choose like that i love both knives and watches and uh, i think when it comes down to it if i had to choose between them i would have to go with a knife because i could live without a watch before i could live without a knife um, so knives but reluctantly because I, I love watches too oh speaking of i finally got my watch look at this i got my uh my oris so this is a custom oris a one-off oris from uh so this was from Timeless Luxury Watches, but Loomshot here on YouTube, who if you haven't checked him out, you should. He did a modification on this. So uh, some of you know from the Whiskey Knife Fight podcast that I wanted the Bico from Oris in a green dial, but they don't sell it in a green dial. But Loomshot modded this one. So I have a green dial Oris Bico, one of one. Suck it, Jeremy. My green is better than your navy. 
<laughs> Wynn Hansen says, have you ever used a Lumentop FW3A flashlight? Yes, but actually, is it in here? I have an FW3T with that little copper. It's dead. Are you comfortable over there? I am. This bed, couch. Bed? I mean, honestly, I'm using it as a bed at this point. One True View says, Ford Raptor or Dodge TRX? Uh, I'd probably have to say TRX just because they're both bonkers, like stupid bonkers trucks. And the TRX, like if you're gonna go bonkers, go bonkers. The TRX is a <laughs> ridiculous truck. Nathan Palacio says, what is the best pocket tool for a college student? Apparently you can't bring knives on campus. One of these right here, a little TPT slide. You can take the blade out and put, hold on, follow me. You can take the blade out and put one of these in. Not that side, that's the camp fork. Put it in like this, it's, it's, it's just not sharpened. So you can still use that to cut open packages and stuff. It's sharp enough to open like tape and you've got a pocket tool. I told Megan to pick some questions for me. So she is on my phone currently picking some questions and she goes, oh, this one's cute. So, oh mm -hmm. boy, mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. very little faith in this. It's okay, I have very little faith in myself. Happy as can be said, what are you glad you learned with Eleanor that you get to use with Flynn? That's a pretty good question. I don't even, I don't even know either. Like, I, I think the biggest thing is just how resilient babies are, right? Like, you don't have to, you know, be so delicate with them. Like they, obviously you don't want to be rough with them, but they're, they're tougher than you think. That and, and just enjoying the moments that you have, like, God, she's grown up so fast. She's almost two and she's talking and turned into this like human being with thoughts and emotions and stuff it goes by so fast and it's only been two years so i can only imagine like when eleanor's a teenager how i'm gonna feel about it spend time that's one thing i learned really quickly is spend more time with the family so i, I always try to carve out family time i don't work weekends anymore and uh, i'm always home for dinner so uh, i'd say 99 percent of the time i'm home for dinner i don't know how to say. f marin's edc uh best starter whiskey I actually tried this for the first time recently. I've never tried Elijah Craig for some reason, but Elijah Craig small batch is really, really good. Probably dollar for dollar, one of the best whiskeys you can get for the price. I think it was like $25, $30 for a fifth. Like really good whiskey for that price. <laughs> oh, the train, that train's moving. That was an Amtrak, they don't slow down. And then Sky High YN says, do you play any video games or collect anything other than EDC gear? No, I don't really collect anything. Uh, I've started like, getting rid of stuff a lot more uh, in the last like year or two uh, i have a lot of stuff here i don't get rid of like work stuff but stuff at home i don't use it so i get rid of it um but as far as playing video games i used to play rocket league like a couple months ago i haven't played rocket league a lot lately uh, i do have a gaming rig in the other office like a really really powerful gaming rig and i wanted to play more games uh, i'll probably move it home after uh i get settled here or whatever after flynn's born and, and play i had red dead redemption I never got through the intro on it, but I'd, I'd like to play some more games. I play Skyrim sometimes on the Switch. I, I like to play games. I might even start streaming. Like, if I can get ahead of things here with the channel and get you into a rhythm and we get, like, flowing with the work here, I might stream some. I've talked about it for years and never really done it. Get a PS5 for this TV? Ooh. I can... I never get any work done. <laughs> Derek does says Guardian Tactical or Microtech and why. I just got this yesterday. Uh, again, I rebought the Recon 035 and I personally prefer Guardian Tactical over Microtech just because they fire better. They're, they're smoother knives and I like the size of this one a little better than the Microtech, the Ultratex. They just seem like skinny, long and skinny. My Cypher was very long and skinny. It was very hard to actuate and this thing, Fires very easy and very smooth, and I really like that. The one complaint about these Guardian Tacticals, uh, the last one was the exact same way. The blade comes right up to the edge. I don't know if you can see it, um, and if you push and slide your finger, not that you should do that, but if you do, you can cut your finger. So that is the one thing about the Guardian Tacticals is that blade comes right up to the edge. Another question from IH133 said, what made your YouTube slash Discord take off? Uh, consistent content or strategy. Honestly, the world may never know. Nobody really understands the algorithm or how it works. And I think it was just right time, right place and uh, being consistent for a long time and 
I don't know, doing something that nobody else was really doing at the time. That probably is what made it work. Like there wasn't a lot of EDC content when I started this channel. There were some people who would do EDC stuff, but there wasn't really a dedicated EDC channel. So um, it was probably just kind of a culmination of a lot of different things. I don't think there's ever really one thing that sets a channel off like that. You have to have multiple things to really come together to make it work, I think. There's a lot of luck involved, but a lot of hard work and a lot of planning and being consistent, I think, also helps. Because while not everybody knows how the algorithm works, it is very clear that if you are not consistent, the algorithm will chew you up and spit you out. So always be consistent. All right, the last question is for Megan. And we're going to end this because I think it's really relevant. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. Can you explain the feeling of becoming a father? Man, um, you know, <laughs> it's an insane feeling. You know, you, you teach your son, your daughter, about life and <laughs> it's just no one ever prepares you for it yeah, yeah, yeah being a father it's one of the greatest experiences of my entire life <laughs> it's changed my life and what a what a dad i what a true dad thank you thank you i'm, I'm gonna answer the question <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the question again was can you explain the feeling of becoming a father i think that's a really good place to end because uh, by the time you see me again i will be a father times two so the first time around, when Eleanor was born, I mean, it, the whole thing was a rush, right? So she came out and had amniotic fluid and was not breathing well. So the whole like hour after she was born was crazy. But I mean, the the true feeling is exhaustion, right? But the the like the heart wrenching, gut wrenching stuff is is really I don't know how to put it to words. It's one of the best feelings in the world. Like you're responsible for life, you know? You've brought something into the world and you are responsible for keeping it alive and that feeling is it's just super rewarding seeing her grow up every single day like i come home from work and most days she's doing something she didn't do the day before and seeing something or someone a little tiny human being learn and grow and become something so inspiring i think is uh, just it's just a really cool feeling the feeling of becoming a father can I explain that? I don't really think I can. I don't think anybody can explain the feeling of becoming a father. It's not something that you really know until you feel it. Like everybody tried to tell me what it was gonna be like and that doesn't really prepare you for it. What, what prepares you for it is those first few hours in the hospital and coming home those first few days in the first week, first couple of weeks it's, uh, it's a different life. Your whole life changes and not in the ways you expect. Like people will tell you that, oh yeah, you're not going to get sleep and everything is going to change. And uh, some things that people say will change don't. Uh, I think a lot of people prescribe themselves to a certain lifestyle after they become a parent and you don't really have to. You can really do it your own way. And that's how I think Alex and I have done it. We've not really, I mean, granted, we're raising Eleanor in a pandemic and it's not typical for you know a two-year-old to barely ever leave the house, but um, I don't know. All, all I'm saying is no amount of people telling you how it's going to be is really going to prepare you or really describe to you in full how it feels. And uh, I'm going through the same thing. Like, I've gone through it once, and it's so hard to remember exactly how I felt when Eleanor was born. And uh, <laughs> within the next week, I will do it again, so... Yeah, I'm excited, but I'm equal parts excited and nervous and terrified. Even though I know it's going to be okay, it's just uh, that, that feeling of not knowing what the next week is going to bring is, uh, I don't know. It's exciting, but also terrifying. That's it, guys. Thanks for asking. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like, it's gonna, like, if break you on me. fall, I'm going to have to explain to Alex why you're not coming home tonight. <laughs> I'll blame you. I'll just tell it was your fault. I'm live proof, so <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Well, thank you guys for all the questions and for sticking with me through these crazy two months. Um, I'm gonna be gone for a little bit as well. I hope if I have the time, I'll get some stuff pre-recorded and you know, there won't be much of a gap that you guys see, but that's probably not gonna happen because of the way that I am. But you guys have made it possible. I mean, the last two months have been very trying for my whole family and uh, you guys have made it possible to just get by. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for subscribing, watching, 
liking, supporting on Patreon, buying shirts and stickers and all of that. It all helps so, so much. But yeah, I also have, if you didn't catch it in the last video, new shirts, new hats, those are available over at Carry Commission. Um, that's one of the best ways you can support me if you are interested in that. And there's also a sticker pack over there as well. And the TPT slide. There are some of those left. They're actually going pretty quickly. And then after this, I think we're going to change up the design a little bit. So they're going to be different after these are gone. So if you like that topo with the, the best MEDC logo, get them while they last. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, do all that stuff. If you want to support what I'm doing here, hit the links in the description down below. With all that said, and until next time, carry on.